Welcome to the Data Hall YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about how do we combine multiple files in R. So let's just say you're working with some uh, data set. Uh, let's just say you have stock returns of multiple firms and usually they come in different CSV files. So you might want to convert these comma separated files or you might have text files uh, that is tab delimited files and you might want to convert combine all those files or you have multiple excel files and you you would like to combine those files to perform certain analysis so we are going to discuss all these three different uh, how do we combine all these three different formats of data so let's start with combining multiple csv files so firstly we are going to work with this tidyverse data set uh, so let's load this data Ah, oh, sorry, let's load this uh, this package. And now we are going to set our working directory. So I have specified my working directory within this, uh, this set working directory command. Uh, so I have set the working directory. So let me show you the, the files that I ha have over here. So I have different example folders and this first example folder contain an R script. So I'm not going to use this R script. This is an empty R script. So I, I just wanted to, to, to communicate certain uh, methods. So that's why I have uh, pasted that over here. And then I have different CSV. Now each file contain the registration number of the student and their marks. Again, we have three different CSV file and each one have the same number of columns and they are labeled exactly the same way that is the first column is the registration number and the second column is the marks column right so so let's combine these three files so what we are going to do is we are going to uh, use this list dot files function and what this list dot files function would do is it would get the list of files from the current working directory so we know that example one is the current working directory. So we want the list of files from this working directory. Now, which files do we want? Now I have intentionally pasted this, uh, this R script over here because I wanted to display, uh, uh, because if we have other files in that folder, what we want is we want to specify this parameter, this pattern parameter where uh, it would be equal to asterisk dot csv and this asterisk is a wildcard which means it can you know the csv file can have any name but at the end it should have dot csv so this should be the pattern uh, and we want the full name of that file so if i execute just this part of the code it should get me the list of the files so it get me student one dot csv student two dot csv and all the csv files so this is just the list of those files and you can also see that we have this R script, but remember we just specify that we just want the CSV, the files with the CSV extension. Now, how do we have this R script uh, in the list of files? And the reason is this pattern doesn't specify the extension. What it is saying is that you have to provide the pattern of how those files are named and uh, th there is a whole way of writing that pattern and that is called regex right uh, in regex it is again a whole uh, set of symbols but what we do is we we instead of writing it like this we, we write like this and what it says is that anything before this dot i mean it can have any characters but it should have dot csv at the end so this is what the dollar symbol is specified so if we execute this now we have specified the regex code instead of just having the asterisk dot csv and now we only get the csv files but anyhow how uh, that is not necessary to do uh, in this specific case but you, you need to know that list dot uh, how does this list dot files would work now what we are going to do is we are going to specify, uh, you know, uh, pipe this list into this l apply function, and this l apply function is sort of a loop function. It loops through thing, but it is somewhat, uh, uh, you know, an advanced version of loop. 
so it would loop through each file and it would read those files so this is where the read underscore csv uh, function comes in and this function is from the uh, the read r package again which is loaded within the the tidyverse package so this tidyverse is a set of different packages it include dplyr r west and other packages as well uh, so once we have read those files what we want is we want to take all those files and we want to bind them using bind underscore rows function so let's uh, so 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 we get the result as a data frame so it would contain the combined rows and we want to save that into this csv1 object so let's execute this press control enter and it would take a while and now we have this CSV1 object that contains the registration number and the marks of students. So if I sort the registration number, you would see that because in the file, in the first file, we had, uh, you know, this student ABC 1009. And in the second file, we also had the same student. So there was somewhat repetition of students in those files right so again you can see that they both have the same data right so these two are repeated uh, in this data set so what we want to do we might want to have uh, maybe a distinct we would use the distinct uh, function and we want it to uh, just give us a single uh, let me copy that from over here the single registration number right so if i execute this line of code i have just added uh, distinct and now instead of having 26 uh, okay so the mistake that i did is uh, although we have distinct registration numbers but uh, uh, i should have used this parameter dot keep underscore all is equal to true and what this would do is uh, as you can see from the help menu it would uh, keep all the uh, all the variables in our uh, original data set so uh, so I have added this parameter and now I would execute the command and you can see that we would have 24 observations and two variables so we do not have the repetition of this uh, 09 and 010 code okay uh, we can also use this ignore case and uh, that is used within this list files function uh, if we have different uh, you know cases uh, i mean uh, capital cases certain files have capital cases certain files would have uh, lower cases in their names uh, or the pattern of the names then we can use this ignore case function okay so what if we have different number of columns so we have over here this example two data set where in the students one i have a, an additional column that is the age column but in other file so let's just say students to file we do not have that age column we just have the registration number and the marks so now we have a case where we have different number of columns so i'm again going to use the set uh, wd working directory now i'm going to use this example two folder and we are going to use the same function but what i have done over here is uh, I have, I have used the exact same code as I did over here. We do not have to worry about the distinct cases because uh, we have already understood that. So if I execute this command, we would have this CSV2 and we would have age column over here, but we would just have the data uh, with, the, uh, with the rows where it was there in the original data set and the, in the rest of the cases it would not have any any values and that would be a missing value right so that's quite common uh, what if we have different column names uh, they just say in few files we have std registration and in the other files we just have reg uh, column name to represent the registration number then what would happen is that we would have a column for std registration and then we would have a second column for reg because r would not be able to understand whether these are the same columns or different columns or different data sets or different datas. Uh, so we need to come, uh, we need to change the, the column names before combining them. Okay, let's move forward. Uh, if we are going to import multiple CSV files, 
what some, sometimes happens is that we have different column types in different data sets. So we know that in a data frame, each column should have a specific data type, right? So each column would either have a character data or each column would have a numeric data or a logical data. But sometimes what happens is that uh, in certain files, we would have certain values that would be character, certain column would be character and the same column would be numerical or double uh, in, in another file. So uh, over here, I have this example three data set which contains multiple files. Now these are stock written files. We have their opening, closing, high, low, volume, etc. And when I import this data, uh, I, I run into an error. And the error is because as you can see, when it imports, it specifies which columns are character, which columns are double, uh, that is numeric and uh, which are date columns. So it kind of automatically uh, gets an idea from the data and assign that specific column type to it. Now what happens is sometimes, for example, there is this LDCP, which stands for last day closing price. In certain data set, it has assigned a logical data type to this LDCP column, but in other uh, and other files, it has assigned a numeric data type. So now uh, it it encounters an error when it is going to bind those rows because it cannot bind those rows if the data type is different. So what I'm going to do is the the easy way is when we use this read CSV uh, function. Within read CSV function, we can specify that import all the columns or all the data as string data. Do not assign the character data or the double digit. Just import them as characters, as strings. And once we have imported them, we can assign uh, them the specific uh, data type that we would want to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, use this column types. And for all columns, we should have the default as character. Okay, so we have we had mistakenly added uh, a parenthesis over here that we have removed, uh, replaced with a comma. And now if we execute this, we can see that those files had been combined. And now we have all the data, but uh, the, the only thing is that if we look at the structure of this data, that is CSV3, uh, we would see that all of these uh, these columns have uh, have character data type, right? Uh, so uh, so that we can convert by by ourselves. Okay, so let's move forward and let's combine. Let's just say if we have got instead of CSV file, we have got tab delimited uh, files. So in, so CSV files are where the columns are separated by commas and tab delimited files are where columns are separated by by tabs. If I can show you the files, now we're going to work with this example four and instead of CSV, we have the same data, but now they are separated by a tab, right? Okay, so how do we work with that? Again, we are going to use the S uh, set working directory and uh, we are going to use the same set of commands but one thing that we have changed is that instead of csv now the pattern would be txt because these files have a dot txt extension next instead of using the read csv uh, function we are going to use the read underscore delimit uh, function again from the same read our package uh, so that would be if i can show you that read r and we use this so we can get all the functions that are there uh, within the read r package we are going to use this read underscore delim function okay so let me remove that uh, because we are going to use uh, the tab delimited files and the rest of the command is exactly the same. If we execute that, we get the tab delimited and we have the exact same data and we know that there are certain uh, duplicate values which we can um, use certain functions to, to get unique values. Lastly, how do we combine multiple Excel files? 
Uh, so in the example five folder, we have the same data, but now we have different Excel sheets. They are not CSV files, they are Excel sheets. Remember for this exercise, we are going to use two set of libraries. One is the tidyverse, uh, which I have already loaded, but if you haven't, you are going to use this command over here. And the second is we are going to use the read Excel because we are going to read the Excel file. So let's load the read uh, Excel uh, uh, library and let's set our working directory to example five folder. And we are going to use the pattern which would be equal to XLSX. Again, if you do not want to use uh, this regex, you can simply use uh, this pattern over here. And we are going to use the read underscore Excel function from the read Excel library and the rest of the command would remain same and that would read the same data set. And again, we know that we have duplicates over here. So I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching this video. Do subscribe the channel and do hit the bell icon.